How's it going guys? Good morning and I hope your week is going really well. It's Wednesday morning and time for your five for five and today's five for five was again inspired by my ironworks guys this week but not by the passages we read necessarily but kind of more by the lives that these guys are living. Now, I'm not going to go to name names because we're working really hard on serving humbly in our in our areas and I don't want to give them some kind of like ego boost and have issues but we have some amazing guys as part of this bigger community right? We have guys that are spread all across several states that share readings with each other all week and prayer requests as they come up. And the part that really hit me this week was just how much ministry these guys do in their circles of influence. Every believer has a part to play in the kingdom. When we're saved, guys, we're not saved and set aside for heaven one day, right? Many people live that way. Instead, when we're saved, we're saved and then we're sent out. The guys I meet with each week are spiritual leaders in their neighborhoods, their workplaces, and a lot of other areas as well. People recognize that there's something about these guys and how they live and, and just plain and simple conversations quickly roll into ministry for them. The amazing part is just how far that ministry reaches, right? People come to these guys in the tragedy and with questions and they do their best to answer those using scripture as their guide. Now I'm blown away and I'm honored honestly to be part of that brotherhood. The way that they're living out their faith reminds me of a passage in 1 Peter 2. It says, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then, actually just a few verses later, we read this part. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We must put behind us our old selves and any hypocrisy that points back to that old self, right? And instead, embrace this new identity we have as ch a child of God. We, we get to brag about the God who saved us and brought us into his family. We get to brag with our words and mostly with our actions. And it's when others see those consistent actions, they begin to see Jesus in us. Now, there's a time and a place for us to meet together for corporate worship as the body of believers, right? We should never abandon that practice. That time is where we get encouraged and we get to build each other up. And, and the stuff that's done, though, off property and when all kinds of weird hours of the night, that is the trench work of our faith, right? The person who is in crisis and comes into your office because of the light of Jesus shining through you, man, that's ministry. The marriage that's crumbling because of betrayal and the couple comes to you for advice and for prayer, that's ministry. Do we always feel prepared for those ministry opportunities? Absolutely not. Do we always have the energy for those ministry opportunities? Probably not. But we are called to be ministers as part of our new identity in Jesus, right? By investing in others, you build the quality relationships where people are able to see Jesus inside of you. And I want to encourage you guys to not think it's someone else's job to be a minister of the gospel. If you're saved, you are called, plain and simple. Every believer has a part to play in the kingdom. I know the Ironworks guys are rocking their callings, and I know many of you guys probably have similar stories out there as well, but if you don't have a story of God using you in someone else's life, then man, make sure that you're living a life that gives off the light of Jesus. And then also, make sure that you're making yourself available to the Holy Spirit's leading, right? Don't, don't squash that. Pray for opportunities, and then buckle up, because as Pastor Jeremy always says, ministry is messy, but it's what we're called to do. Guys, have a great day. Look for opportunities to be ministers of the gospel today around you, and we'll see you real soon.